They'll be calling you a radical. Kevin Blatt here at Washington Square. This is our Fukushima awareness event. This is how we're going to start. We're going to walk down to Alexander Hamilton's grave. I'm going to explain why we've done this here. 33 months ago, exactly, I come over here in that winter, that hard winter we had 2010. I was trying to coincide post ignorance, my social movement, with the 100th anniversary of the shirtwaist fire which happened right there. Building D at NYU, the Brown Building, when those girls jumped to their dad, and this country had a social contest, and this country had some morality, and they were a gas. And it changed the world economically. We could talk, so I'm holding the sign post ignorance. This group of young people come over here from NYU. We met here three days in a row. And I was trying to coincide it for March 25th, 2011. These are the group that ended up starting Occupy. But anyway, we all know what happened. Two weeks before, boom, Fukushima happened. My experience in the nuclear complex, because I was head of the atomic weapons, my father's death was nuked to death, and living in Utah is a downwinder. We all knew, I knew what this was. I knew, we've been expecting it for decades. I cannot believe it was 25 years between a major accident, which lots of small accidents. So it changed everything. So as I'm talking to those guys, they're like, Kevin, you're over the top of Fukushima, so we're going to Zuccotti, we're going to, and you know, they had no idea what they're going to call it, that evolved. Well, anyway, I'm due to speak in Zuccotti. You know, I'm doing videos from my home. My plane flight was that night, the day I got sick. Boom, smacked like a freight train. And I mean smacked by the freight train. So what I'm going to talk about today, we know the story of Fukushima, so many of us have watched this. We all know it. We know Occupy did a beautiful job exposing what happened. Why we're here, we're starting a bunch of us activists here because we're not about bitching anymore. We've told the tale. We're about answers. It's time for answers. So that's what we're going to do. It's time for answers economically, philosophically, socially. I have answers. Now you might not like my answers, but it doesn't matter. This is not a popularity contest. These are things that have proven to work. That's why we came to Washington Square. Everything that has really worked in the history of this great American experiment has happened here, on this hallowed sacred ground. The horrific death of the shirtwaist fires, by the way, Megan Rice's father, the Catholic Workers' Right Union, Dorothy Day, he was a professor right here. You don't think she knows? She's been born into activism her entire life. As she says, I gladly give my life to heal this planet for She's sitting in that prison cell and they backed out the sentencing on Monday because they didn't want to murder her. She knows exactly. Everything, the Stonewall riots, right? Everything, we go on and on and on. The Indians were fighting in the 1637, the first abolitionist free slaves right here. Some of the Indians are still buried right over there in the corner of the park. But everything that ever, whether you agree with it or not, it started here. People hated Hamilton then. But Jefferson was smart enough to understand. The Constitution is 226 years old this week, last week. Everybody says, oh, here come the Constitution. Then came the Bill of Rights. Here came the Constitution, then the Tariff Act of 1789. Now that's why I picked this. This was the Garment District of America. We had a social contest. The exact same thing that's happened here in 1911 is happening in Bangladesh constantly. They're going in there. They're Walmart factory tags. This made here, right here in Brooklyn. There's still factories here. My coat that I wore today, made in Italy. So you people have drank the Kool-Aid. Oh, this. Anne Rand, right here. She was a science fiction writer. Alan Greenspan, the lunatic that he was. He was a group. He used to fall around right here in this park, tugging on her skirt. You somehow indoctrinate a science fiction writer in your economic thesis. For the first time in this country, over the last 30, 40 years, we completely get rid of tariffs and duties. You say, oh, that's not the answer. Well, we have no tools left. The interest rate is zero. Worked out nice for you the last 30, 40 years, this experiment. It didn't work. We had $3 million worth of debt after the Civil or excuse me, the Revolutionary War. Well, by the way, Lincoln was a Hamiltonian. FDR was a Hamiltonian. Everybody that ever got anything out of debt went back in. He was not formally educated. You say, how does this tie into nuclearism? It is the fight between power, slavery, and enlightenment. This comes down to morality. This is human rights issues. They're all human. That's what America was. That's how America was founded. We were the beacon of hope 
for the enlightenment for people. We weren't empowering slave owners. Yet we've turned back into a power slavery. You have no moral conscience, none of it. And this, to think this is a popular contest and we're going to get politicians to lead us, they have no moral conscience. The entire baby boomer after boomer has done nothing. Money, 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 money. That's all you care. You don't care that those people, you're wearing blood on your clothes. 1,200 died in one thing in Bangladesh. They're slaves. They are slaves. You want to participate. I, you know, I wasn't that big a fan of Ross Perot's, but he says, which, which party, red or blue? Which one? Wants our American workforce to compete with slaves. Whoosh! Oh, is it true? But when 311 happened, 31111 happened, it changed everything. There was a new hierarchy about social equality. Think about it as human rights. Yeah, we should have the right to not to have to compete with slavery in China. American companies who just went whoo, backdoor every environmental protection law that we ever build up. That's all this was. To backdoor as we throw the baby out with the bathwater. So we pull that out. It's the same people. It's like, okay, General Motors. As GM goes, America goes, right? Still too, they went bankrupt. So GM, we bail them out. They don't employ anyone here. They surely don't pay any taxes here. And even their CEO and their corporate board, they don't live here. There's nothing America about it, except for sucking up American taxpayer money. So it all comes down to human rights. Well, what is the basic human right? The right to breathe air, the right to eat food without getting cancer. So here comes Fukushima, which Tony calls Bloomgate, I call the Pacific Genocide. So everybody's like, oh, you're over the top, you're a lunatic on this, Kevin. They're throwing me in the conspiracy theory every freaking category there is. I'm like, no, 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 no. I know this theory. It's pouring in Pacific the whole time and they're pouring in detail. Why won't the media? I've not seen it on TV. You know, even politicians tell me, Mike Lee told me that. He didn't know anything about it. I had to prep him before I had that conversation. Oh, it hasn't been on CNN or Fox. And these people on YouTube are lunatics. Kevin uses this stream of radical language. Well, there's the art of it. Again, right here. The art of it. Sometimes people say, how does that coincide? It always coincides. By the way, a lot of people don't know this. Jackson Pollock was sitting right over there with the Cooney. Everybody says that was Guggenheim that discovered him. Their studio right there. Their first studio. People argue with it. Their first studio was right over there. They were starving to death. They walked out here on a Saturday one day just like this. And they set some paintings right on a bench right there. There's a great photo of it up there. And who walks by? Mrs. Whitney. That'd be Mrs. Vanderbilt Whitney. And you're saying, oh, well, she's an oligarch. Of course she is. But what happens? You have wives and you have different people that broke away like the Harriet Beecher Stowe. This is the 1830s. Same argument. This is the argument with slavery. And you say, how is that nuclearism? It all goes to the same funnel up. The same conspiracy. If the truth was told about nuclear, this is not a choice between coal and nuclear. We have the apparatus. California's done it. We don't need one of these stinking, filthy, dirty, no good nuclear plants. They, they, they're killing, well, uh, my estimate, at least a thousand people a day in North America are dying from Fukushima a day. And you say, oh, I really it's probably three or four thousand. Radnet, the radiation detective, we spent billions on. Gina McCarthy was head of Radnet. Radnet was taking down after that. Their own numbers off the hook. Canada's own numbers, they're taking off the hook. This is the power of the Department of Energy, which is really the Department of Nuclear, the Department of G, I pledge allegiance to the United States of nuclearism. Hold it under the Patriot Act. The two things. Answers. We have to do this from the bottom up morality. Quit supporting these people that freaking kill people in Bangladesh. There's factories in Brooklyn. Find out. Look at the tag. Zazzle right here. Made right here. Right here in Manhattan. Cost more? Yeah. How long is this thing? You said, I mean, I've worn this every how long? Every, every three freaking years? Look what shape it is in. My shoes. My tripod. Made in Ohio. 1950. Yeah. So keep supporting this. So this has to come from the bottom up because politicians are going to do nothing. And they never have. And we're going to walk down to Hamilton's grave and we're going to talk about his beautiful logic. And he took a bullet for Jefferson, by the way. And there's no doubt in my mind that he missed it on purpose, just like his son missed it on purpose. He wasn't formally educated. The greatest economist, the greatest New Yorker ever, ever. Economically, and they're saying, how can tariffs heal nuclearism? I'll tell you. Very simple. If a person has a decent job, he's working 40 hours a week, like we did for years and years and years. He has time to take on social issues. 
When you're working 65, two jobs at minimum wage, you have no time to even think about these things, let alone take on activism. And it's America's duty to take on activism. That is what America is. With tariffs, this thing changes. We pay off the debt, and there's, oh, you know, you're anti-global trade. No. My coat I wear right there is from Italy. No, I'm anti-slavery. This is anti, these are human rights issues. And we have answers. And I would say this, and we'll do another video down at the Hamilton's grave. I want to say this, the answer. Live like you have cancer before you have cancer. And if you get sick, we know, like me, if I didn't have so much research, I was sent home to die by multiple people. But I fought and fought. I got on the internet. I found a YouTube video by a pathologist, Cedar Sinai, at 14 years. And he says, these pathologists go wrong a lot. And leukemia can't form in tumors. You know, I'd heard that, but I didn't believe it. And it can't. And mine was a tumor. I was misdiagnosed. Sent home to die by multiple doctors. Finally, I got a doctor. And I... So when you, if you get a little bit sick, there's only one really way to know. And I'd hate to say this, but they have to go into your hip and bone marrow biopsy. But I want to say this too, when you get these cancers, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a horrific death. It's a horrific battle. You know, I call that the Fukushima fish hook. They go into your spine, they go into your brain stem, they go in here. I don't know how I'm alive. And this vlog has been my way to say, fight back, fight back. My cancer psychologist has given that, this vlog is what kept you alive. It's the only reason you're alive, you shouldn't die. Fight back. Fight the people that are giving us cancer. You know, they don't care. And the police are not our enemies. They're our friends. They get cancer, too. Even the 1% freaking Jamie Dimon himself. Do I want him to get cancer? Or Hell no. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. This is the bridge to divide. Live like you have cancer. Fresh juice. Don't supplements. Uh -huh. You know, I drink a lot of carrot juice. I ate a lot of fresh vegetables. I cut dairy completely out of my I cut dairy completely out of my body. And as grassroots activists, get involved in your local community. Stand to it.